you're showing the rest of the country that this is possible. Um, that, that thinking big and acting big on behalf of nature and of people is possible, um, even if it's hard and even if it takes a long time. We all should be proud of the work that we are doing, working together to make some magic happen here. And there is no other coalition like this anywhere else in our nation. The state of Florida is spending $6.5 billion in an effort to quote unquote restore the Florida Everglades. This includes removing man-made structures from the Florida Everglades like canals and other infrastructure to restore the Everglades back to nature. However, at the same time, the state of Florida is spending billions of dollars creating new infrastructure in the Everglades. All this at the hands of the South Florida Water Management District. By the way, nothing that they've ever done in the past has ever worked or made things better. Everything that the state of Florida has done ecologically has been a disaster. The same agencies that destroyed Florida are now claiming that if you give them billions of dollars, they can make everything right again. Foremost, I spent a lot of my youth in the Florida Everglades. I'm intimately familiar with the animals. If anybody wants to see Florida be restored, it is myself. However, I'm also aware of what's actually destroying Florida. Contamination from homeless camps, the chemicals that are used on golf courses, and finally, the agricultural sector, in particular, Big Sugar. Human interference is what has destroyed the state of Florida, but now they're claiming if you give them enough money, they can make it all right again. On today's video, we're going to understand how this $6.5 billion is going to be spent. We're going to start off by going over some of the projects that in the past the state of Florida has embarked on and the results that they've had. A massive canal system was dug in the Florida Everglades to drain the Everglades. Today, these same canals that cost innumerable amounts of money to create to drain the Everglades are now being covered over. Yes, these canals no longer exist. There were great places to go fishing, but they were man-made. And of course, part of the Restore the Florida project is to get rid of man-made infrastructure like canals. These canals no longer exist. Part of the billions of dollars that the state of Florida is spending is getting rid of canals like this. These are not small canals. These are structures that run hundreds of miles across South Florida. And obviously covering these canals, again, cost millions of dollars, if not literally billions. Many people claim that these canals have been in Florida for so long now that they're almost part of the habitat. Nonetheless, part of the Restore the Everglades project is getting rid of canals that run for hundreds of miles through the state of Florida. Work has already begun to cover up these canals like this one that goes through Port of the Isles northbound. The Union Canal goes into the Florida Everglades, the state forest, the Picayune State Forest. You can see how they leave behind little lakes. But overall, these giant canals are being covered up by the state of Florida. The one we're looking at here doesn't even exist anymore. It's completely gone at this point. Obviously, this costs billions of dollars. Now, these government agencies don't want you to know that they're literally going in and covering canals because that would cause outrage among the population. They're using words like, we're restoring the sheet flow to the Everglades. In other words, they're using fancy vocabulary to confuse people about what they're physically doing. If the people of Florida knew that billions of dollars are being spent to literally cover up canals, the people would be furious, and that's why they don't really come out and say, yeah, we're spending billions of dollars getting rid of canals. They use fancy terminologies like restoring the sheet flow, which means going in and getting rid of all human-made infrastructure in the Everglades, aka canals. Of course, they don't come out and literally say that. They don't want people to know this is actually what they're doing. So much so that they've started off by the canals that are deep and hidden in the Everglades and still haven't done the canals that are parallel to the roads. A huge part of the project is elevating US-41 through Miami-Dade County. Now this section is already mostly completed and it grabs US-41, which was at flush ground level, and turns it into an elevated expressway through the middle of the Everglades. Which, by the way, despite the fact that it allows animals to move underneath the expressway now, 
It literally turned a flat road into a monstrosity of an infrastructure in the middle of the Everglades that cost billions of dollars. The goal would be for water to flow underneath US-41 because US-41 acted somewhat of a barrier to hold back water from flowing through the Everglades, which is ultimately their goal to restore the flow of water through the Everglades. Interestingly enough, despite the fact that the state of Florida is spending millions of dollars getting rid of canals, if not billions, they're also creating new canals for the new infrastructure that they're putting in place. So we're spending possibly billions of dollars getting rid of canals, but in order to get rid of those canals, we have to make new canals. So we're spending billions of dollars to get rid of canals, but in order to get rid of those canals, we have to put in new canals, if that makes any sense. One billion dollars will go to create a new retention pond near Lake Okeechobee that will be 240,000 acres. So here's where the confusion comes in. You're spending billions of dollars getting rid of human infrastructure in the Florida Everglades to restore the Everglades back to the condition it was before humans. But in order to do that, you somehow have to create a one billion dollar lake near Lake Okeechobee, and this lake is going to act as nothing more than a box filter for Lake Okeechobee because the water in Lake Okeechobee has been contaminated by big sugar, and that's the water that should be flowing to the Florida Everglades. My question is, why is the state spending a billion dollars to filter the water that big sugar contaminated? Shouldn't it be their responsibility to fix that? Why is the state spending money to fix the contamination of a big corporation? And if you're spending billions of dollars to get rid of human infrastructure like canals in the Everglades, then why are you also spending billions of dollars creating new human infrastructure in the Florida Everglades? The state of Florida has been home to some of the largest failed products of human engineering that the world has ever seen. The canal system in Cape Coral, Florida was at a time the largest in the entire world. Today, these canals are plagued with green algae. These toxic blooms are a result of the lack of circulation among what was once the largest canal system in the world. The state of Florida also went on an adventure to create a canal that would go from Citrus County all the way to the East Coast with the one and simple goal of barges not having to go around the state of Florida Despite this project taking hold in Citrus County, it was abandoned further into the state when they discovered that eventually if you brought enough salt water into the state of Florida, that it would contaminate the aquifer and kill all the crops in the entire region. Thus, despite the fact they got started on a monumentous project, the engineers never had the foresight to see that the project wasn't feasible and the ecological destruction that it would bring to the state would be so massive that they eventually had to stop the project. But even in more recent times, projects have had horrific results in South Florida at the hands of the South Florida Water Management District. Eventually, the South Florida Water Management District decided that they wanted to get rid of the Maliuka plants, which were invasive in this wildlife area. Now, while I don't know too much about ecology, I did get to spend a lot of time with the people that were working on this project because I was trying to fish while they were trying to inject the root of trees with a harmful chemical, something like Roundup for larger plants. And they would also spray the sides of the canal with quite literally Roundup by the tens of thousands of gallons, which might have contributed a little bit to the red tide we had after that. So while I don't really know about what goes behind the scenes of eradicating millions of Maliuka plants that were actually brought in by, guess who? Yeah, wait, you guys ready for it? The South Florida Water Management District was the one who introduced the Maliuka plant to the state of Florida to dry up the Florida Everglades. Now they're spending $6.5 billion doing the complete opposite. So while I'm out there fishing in the crew swamp, these guys are wearing what looks like a beekeeper outfits from head to toe, even shielding their face because they're telling me that the chemicals that they're using to kill these plants is about as toxic as anything I could imagine. They suggested that I should probably leave the area if I didn't want to die. They go on to single-handedly drill a hole in every single Maliuka plant in the entire crew swamp, injecting poison into the tree. Simultaneously, a completely different crew carved a 200-foot-wide clearing 
which turned into kind of a canal once it flooded and rained that shuttled water east to west along the Cruz Swamp. Now, these were supposed to act as firewalls, preventing fires from destroying the adjacent town of Bonita Springs. Interestingly, though, these firewalls became an expressway for floodwaters that rushed east to west towards the Imperial River and literally flooded the entire city of Bonita Springs during Hurricane Irma. Now, we can really go on and on about how the state of Florida spends billions of dollars doing projects that cost a lot of money and ultimately have unexpected results. But clearly what's happening now in the state of Florida is that the federal government's giving the state money and the state has its own money and they're going out there and spending billions of dollars in ecological projects that would in theory make the Everglades be restored to its natural settings. The question mark that most people have is if you're creating new infrastructure in the Florida Everglades, how is that not exactly what you're getting rid of? As long as there are more golf courses per capita in South Florida than anywhere else in the world, and Big Sugar continues to contaminate the Florida Everglades, the quality of the water that enters the Florida Everglades will be contaminated. And that's the theory behind creating that big box that will help filter the water before it makes it to the Gulf of Mexico. The problem is that the same people that created the crisis are the same people that are getting paid and getting funds to manage the crisis that they created. And many people in the state of Florida feel that they're going to continue to purposely create ecological crises so that they can have funds to go in there and fix them. And thus you are feeding an endless cycle of enabling these people to continue to be employed as long as they cause destruction, they'll have jobs fixing the destruction that they themselves cost. That's how many people in Florida view the South Florida Management District. They're getting paid to fix the same exact problems that they created. And as long as they're getting paid to fix problems that they're creating, they're going to continue to create problems so that they can continue to be employed. Thus, it's no surprise that people in Florida have little faith in these agencies fixing a problem that they themselves are creating. It's like when your crackhead uncle asks you to borrow $20 or when one of your cousins who spends most of his time in jail tells you that this time around he's really changed his life. It's, it's hard to believe you based on your trajectory. It's almost oxymoron that if you're going to restore the Everglades to its natural condition, that that would require spending billions of dollars in countless infrastructure projects. If you're going to restore it back to nature, then why don't you uh, just stop spending billions of dollars in canals, culverts, just, just get out of there and, and let it be, right? Part of this madness includes building what's like a 14-foot retention wall that runs east to west for many miles across the Florida Everglades. This thing is so massive, when you look at a Google Map image of South Florida, it's literally visible from space. At this point, so much ecological damage has been done to the state of Florida that it's seriously questionable how much more human interference this habitat can tolerate. Yet, of course, how are these people going to get paid? The South Florida Water Management District has become a complete leech on the state of Florida, always crying and demanding more money and always getting it for infrastructure projects that are supposed to make things better. But how are things going to get better in the state of Florida when there's so much contamination, which is the source of the destruction? Currently, one of the biggest contaminating factors in the state of Florida is the homeless population. Any piece of land, whether protected, private, or commercial, that gets inhabited by these individuals gets turned into a complete destruction site. These individuals defecate on these properties. They leave garbage behind on these properties. They many times engage in environmentally damaging activities that are on a massive scale. These individuals are hoarding garbage, literally destroying the entire landscape of the state of Florida. Every single piece of vacant land near a city in the state of Florida has been destroyed by the homeless. They defecate, they leave chemicals, they make meth labs, they bring in car batteries and leave them in the woods, they bring in plastic contamination. All this destruction is brought into the landscape of Florida by these individuals that are living clandestinely in these homeless camps. With a population of about 100,000 homeless people living in the state of Florida, they're destroying the state one lot at a time. 
Now, with the new regulations that the state of Florida has on homelessness, the homeless are pushing further and further away from cities and into protective wildlife areas. On our YouTube channel, we have already documented how Florida's homeless population has now moved into protected preserved lands like mangroves. These are areas that are practically uninhabitable, but the homeless population is now living in these mangrove swamps to hide from law enforcement. And the trail of destruction that they leave behind in these mangroves is unbelievable. And unlike empty lots, cleaning up the destruction and ecological damage that these homeless camps do to areas like mangroves, it doesn't just heal right away. It doesn't just get cleaned up easily. This is the type of destruction that is almost permanent. We're now starting to see homeless camps like this in protected mangrove swamps, on islands, in coastal estuaries. Until you get rid of the homeless population that's destroying these natural habitats, it's pointless to spend billions of dollars in the Florida Everglades because now a huge source of contamination is these homeless camps. People are literally defecating in these swamps and the smell doesn't go away. The water there, it doesn't go anywhere. It's sandy and it doesn't absorb anything because there's water right underneath it. That stench stays around. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't filter out. These mangrove swamps are sand. It literally, all the contamination, human waste, it just sits there and you can smell these homeless camps from miles away. This is what's really destroying the state of Florida right now. To summarize today's video, $6.5 billion would be enough money to house every single homeless person in the state of Florida. Assuming that you make townhomes at a cost of $140,000 a piece, they don't have to be luxury. $6.5 billion would be enough to house the state's entire homeless population in three bedroom, two bath townhomes. That is how much money is being spent in the Florida Everglades on projects enough to completely house Florida's entire homeless population. What's questionable is how successful these projects are going to be when Big Sugar continues to contaminate Florida, when you have 100,000 people defecating all over the state of Florida, and with these new homeless laws, the homeless are now going into protected, preserved lands because they're no longer able to live in the urban course due to the new laws that the governor has signed. As long as the state of Florida continues to be contaminated by 100,000 homeless people and big sugar and golf courses that are allowed to use as much chemicals as they want, Roundup, pesticides, the land use contamination as a result of these golf courses, which South Florida has the largest concentration in the world probably, is leading to contamination of the waterways. But at the end of the day, this is how the state of Florida works. Billions of dollars in the projects that probably will have very little effect on the future of the state. While if we look the other way, we're seeing how the state is literally being destroyed. These homeless shelters and the mangroves are now literally on the outskirts of large cities like Fort Myers, Sarasota. You won't find a mangrove swamp in the Tampa Bay area that doesn't have improvised homeless camps. This is an ecology that is very sensitive. It's a ground that doesn't filter very well and the garbage and contamination from these homeless shelters that are being built out here in these swamps to hide from law enforcement are leading to unreversible ecological damage. The state of Florida will never be the same. And the saddest part is that even the state's most beautiful gems like the Florida Keys, even the Florida Keys are rampant with homeless camps, rampant with abandoned boats, people living on abandoned boats. People in the Florida Keys are illegally dumping their garbage into the ocean. Even national treasures like the Florida Keys are nothing but abandoned boats, people living in tents in the mangroves, garbage and filth. This is the Florida Keys. Look at this. This is the Florida Keys. Islands that are protected and there's propane tanks and gasoline tanks and five gallon drums of paint in the freaking Florida Keys. This is what the state of Florida needs to be spending money cleaning up. You know the hypocrisy of slapping a sticker on an abandoned boat? That's what they do. When they find an abandoned boat like this one full of garbage, they slap a sticker on it. Well, whoever owns this boat, come get it. Come on. The hypocrisy of not cleaning up the environment while making these billions of dollars go into projects that in the future 
we're going to see where nothing more than kickback schemes, money laundering, who knows what these people are really doing, why they're really spending billions of dollars in the Florida Everglades. There has to be something behind it because it doesn't make sense that with as much contamination as destruction as is visibly appreciated along the coast of Florida right now, this is what the Florida Keys look like right now. Why aren't you cleaning this up? Abandoned boats in Fort Myers, Sarasota, Bradenton. The entire Florida coast right now is just littered with abandoned boats, garbage, contamination. Look at this, chemicals, all that. This is what the Florida coast looks like right now. Why not just spend some of that money cleaning up these coastlines? All the rivers, all the harbors, all the inlets are just littered with abandoned boats in Florida right now. People living in the mangroves, littering and dumping. All this destruction is happening along Florida's coastline, yet the state doesn't spend a single dollar addressing those issues. They spend billions of dollars creating ponds in the middle of the Everglades to clean up the mess that Big Sugar's made so they can continue dumping more garbage into the Florida Everglades at, at a larger rate. I mean, what's the real ultimate goal here? If they're destroying the state of Florida, why are you going to then accommodate their destruction while this is the reality of the state of Florida? This is what our waterways look like. This is in the Florida Keys, the islands. There's only one road to get in and out. This is all supposed to be beautiful, preserved natural areas, and it looks like a freaking landfill. The destruction of Florida is clear and evident, yet the state doesn't really address the real destruction that's going on. It sounds pretty to go in front of cameras and say, we're restoring the Everglades. We got 70 projects. We're going to spend a billion dollars creating a lake. We're going to raise US-41 so the animals can go underneath it. We're going to spend billions of dollars getting rid of these man-made canals. But most of the coastline of Florida looks like a freaking landfill. You see these boats right here? These are people that live in the mangroves. And they park their boats right here. And they use their boats to get back and forth from the islands where they live on. Look at how much garbage and litter there is here in these mangroves in the Florida Keys. These are islands. What is happening to Florida? Spending billions of dollars creating these massive infrastructure projects in the Everglades when they should just leave that area alone and get people out of there. But look at what we're doing to the coastline. How much sense does it make to spend billions of dollars doing all these projects in the Florida Everglades when we don't even clean up the garbage, when we don't even stop the reason why people are living in these mangroves, healthcare, addiction, homeless shelters, none of that really matters. That is destroying the state of Florida as we speak. But what does the state of Florida do? Instead of fixing the problems we have here, they fly people to California to record homeless people on the sidewalks of San Francisco. You don't need to go to San Francisco. You can go to Bradenton. You can go to Brevard County, Volusia County, Lee County, the Florida Keys. You don't have to go too far to find the same things that you're seeing in California. It's all happening here in the state of Florida. Our waterways are destroyed. And in fact, I don't even think there's anything we can do about it at this point. How do you extract contamination from water? How do you fix this? And look at this environment here. You can clean up the garbage. What about the chemicals that have leached into the ground? What about the paint? How, how do you clean? There's no, there's no reversing the damage that we have done to this place. It's probably too late. This is today's video. The state of Florida is spending billions of dollars in the Florida Everglades, but they're spending zero dollars addressing the causes of the contamination along the coastline. Our coastlines look like landfills. You'll never see anybody from any of these agencies talking about this problem. They go in front of cameras and they brag about we're doing this and we're doing that and we're saving the Everglades. I don't think we can save this anymore. I think some of this destruction that we've done has no repair.